So I have just completed my third e-bike conversion on this uh, bike right here. And now I have done all three kinds of conversions that you can do. This is a front wheel drive bike, that is a mid drive bike, and that is a rear wheel drive bike. So I have done all three types of conversions. And I've learned a lot along the way. And um, I will say all three kinds are excellent. There's really not that much difference between the different kinds, except the price. The mid-drive costs two to three times what these others cost. Um, but these others are excellent. I'm very happy with them. So um, I'm going to take you through my latest bike and um, just give you a few important points of uh, doing the conversion. So to convert an e-bike costs about $350. If you're doing one of the uh, rear wheel drive or front wheel drive kits, it's about $200 for the kit, maybe $250, depending on how nice of a kit you get. The battery will cost you about $100 um, if you build it yourself. And I have many DIY videos on building your own battery. Um, and in theory, that's all you need, but in reality, you will need more. These kits um, come with horrible. Um, accessories, the brake levers they come with are terrible. Um, sometimes the throttles that they come with are terrible. And so you'll probably want to replace the brake levers, the throttle, um, with some of your own that you can get off Amazon. Um, so you'll, you will end up you know, with another 20 or $30 in accessories, um, putting some nicer accessories on the bike. And then you will need some place to mount the battery. Um, uh, you know, but one of these battery bags costs another like fifteen, twenty dollars. So that's everything you're going to need um, to do this. Um, and the nice thing is these kits are pretty universal. So regardless of which kit you buy, you can pretty much find a, a different throttle or a different brake system, or you can find accessories to replace the ones that come with the kit, um, uh, and and you know get the bike just the way you want it. Um, so let me uh, show you around some of the important things that you need to do to do the conversion. So here is the main drive wheel and this is one of the easiest parts of the conversion. Um, when you buy your kit, the first thing you got to figure out is are you going to do front wheel drive or rear wheel drive? The nice thing about front wheel drive is you don't have to mess with the chains, the cassette, the derailers, any of that kind of stuff. You just undo your front wheel and put on this wheel. So that's the a nice thing about it. And that's actually why I chose this kit for this bike is just to do a simple conversion and not mess with the, the chain and the derailleur and having to retune all the gears. Um, now, when, um, so that's the first thing you've got to factor is which wheel you're going to do. This is front wheel drive. The next thing is, if your bike has disc brakes, make sure the kit you are buying has disc brake attachments. If on the left side of the wheel there is a bunch of little Allen heads, about six Allen heads around a circle at the center of the hub, then that is probably the disc brake mount and that wheel is probably disc brake compatible. But you know, just check the description and, and make sure it is disc brake compatible if you have disc brakes, which this is and, and does. And then the last thing you're going to need is a torque arm. This is the torque arm. And what, is, what this is, is it helps transfer some of the torque. It helps transfer some of the torque from the motor into the vertical shock, as opposed to putting all the torque just on the axle shaft. The axle shaft is keyed but the only thing holding it in place is two little strips of metal that are welded on the end of the fork. And now you're putting hundreds of watts into just those two little pieces of metal that hold the front wheel onto the fork. And the torque um, could wallow out the mount. So they make something called the torque arm and it's keyed and goes on the shaft and its job is to try and transfer some of that torque into this arm and the arm just presses against this metal so the torque is being transferred against 
that solid piece of metal. Um, the cable tie, uh, this is a, like a, a hose clamp that holds it in place and it's bolted there, but its job is simply to try and transfer some of the torque out of the mount and up the arm and against the metal there just to, just to, so you don't damage your front forks. Um, it is highly recommended and it's pretty easy to install, so I did. Anyways, so that's the front wheel. You know, it's mounted, it has disc brakes, it's got a torque arm, and that's about all you have to do to do the front wheel. So one of the tougher things to do is get your handlebars just right. And the reason is you have to install a bunch of stuff on your handlebars and you start to run out of room. You have to install a throttle, the controller, and both brakes need to be um, uh, changed. Um, so the first thing I did is actually removed the front derailleur completely. There is no gearing left on the left side. Um, once you have an e-bike you're not going to really use your front derailleur that much and by removing the gearing it gives you just that extra bit of room to fit your throttle and you can still reach your brakes and everything everything just it just gives it frees up the space you need I have tried before to to do the gearing the throttle and the controller and it's tough it's tough to keep everything within easy reach of your thumb um, so I got rid of the left derailleur and you know got all the space I need here now let's talk about brakes for a second the most kids come with a brake lever like this that has a sensor in it that sensor is so that the bike knows you're pulling the brakes and it can kill the power to the motor well the problem is these are horrible these are just nasty cheap brake levers and you know if you have a nice bike you've got nice Shimano or Tektro um, brakes and you don't really want to s replace them with this horrible um, brake lever and in fact on my wife's bike the brake lever and the gear shifter are actually one integrated unit so you can't even really replace the brake lever even if you wanted to so there is another solution instead of the brake lever with a switch they make Hall effect sensors that you tape on the underside of the brake lever with a magnet and when you pull your normal brakes um, the magnet moves away from the Hall effect sensor and that sends a signal to the controller that the brakes have been pulled so you can you do not have to use these horrible brake levers that come with the kit you can just get the Hall effect sensors and use those instead and uh, your brakes will work just fine this is the throttle this is the you know controller um, you know this is how much pedal assist you want and you know that's your handlebars um, just like I said the hardest part is just getting enough space for everything and, and I've decided to get rid of the left derailleur left gearing to make room and it's worked out great on this bike quick look at the Hall effect sensor there it is and that's the magnet that it's reading and as you pull the brake lever, the magnet moves away from the sensor and it knows that you've pulled the brakes. So these Hall effect sensors are pretty nice and um, being able to keep your own brakes and still use the electric motor setup. Okay, let's talk about the pedal assist sensor. This is a magnet ring that screws behind your pedal and then this is a Hall effect sensor that reads every time the magnets rotate this is how the bike knows that you are pedaling and knows when to give you assistance or not on my wife's bike I chose not to install this and I, her bike is throttle only you can only use it only you only works when you use the throttle on this bike I decided to install the pedal assist sensor um, and so to do that you have to take your pedal off to take it off you have to use a special puller tool that you can you'll have to buy on Amazon these cannot just be pulled off without the special tool but with a special tool you can pull off your pedal and then you slide on this magnet ring and and then put your pedal back on now the sensor the sensor is also supposed to sort of go on the pedal but um, the, the sensor that they supplied 
um, didn't didn't fit um, on the on my hub, so I had to come up with a different way to mount the sensor so the sensor can read the magnet. So what I did is I took the metal on the back of it, cut it and bent it up, and then used this. Um, I used this uh, worm clamp to hold the sensor in place and it all worked out beautifully. So this worm clamp is holding a piece of, the piece of metal that comes off the back of the sensor here in place and the sensor is nice and firm and then the magnet ring is here and as you pedal that sensor can, can read the magnets and knows what's going on. So that's the pedal assist sensor. Again, you do need a special pull, a tool to remove the pedal, um, but with that tool installing the, the pedal assist sensor was relatively easy. So the last thing you need is some way to mount the battery and the controller. Um, I chose to get this triangle bag and it actually fit beautifully in this frame. Couldn't have asked for it to fit better. Um, but I, this bag I had tried on one of my other bikes and it did not fit because the other bike had a smaller frame. So finding the right bag for your bike is sometimes a challenge, but um, this bag just fit perfectly in the bike and I'm happy with it. Um, I have a 36 volt battery in here. It is a 10P, um, no, 10S 6P battery, so there's 60 lithium ion cells wired up in there. Um, and then the controller is also in here, so that's nice because sometimes if you get a, you know, if you get a, a like a, one of those like aluminum battery boxes, you still end up with a, needing a place somewhere else to put your controller for the e-bike kit. So by getting some sort of soft bag, you can put the controller and the battery in one place. Um, so the battery and the controller are in here. Um, you also need some way to charge it. This is just a barrel jack that goes to the battery. And you just use a, uh, you know, a standard power brick to charge this battery. Um, this is a 10S battery, which means even though this is a 36 volt system, fully charged, this is actually 42 volts. So if you look at this um, charger here, uh, can you see that? There you go, it's 42 volts. So again, uh, a 36 volt bike actually needs a 42 volt charger. Um, just because of the way that Chem lithium chemistry works and then a um, if you get a 48 volt system you will need a, a 13 um, a 13 s uh, you'll probably end up doing a 13 s battery which I think is like 54 volts so a 48 volt battery I think you'll actually be getting like a, a 54 volt charger um, so just make sure you know the the charging voltage in, for, of the battery you're going to use of the system you're buying and you know and then get the right sort of charger to go with it that normally the batteries and the charges are sold separately um, so you will you know you'll need to know what e-bike kit you bought and then get a, a matching battery again I built my own battery and I will put a link to me building my battery um, but um, you can just buy batteries um, but uh, you know, don't buy, I wouldn't buy those cheap AliExpress batteries. The cells are of unknown quantity, uh, quality, especially if you buy a really cheap one. And um, you could definitely, you know, um, you could definitely, uh, you know, have some problems charging them and, and um, you know, the longevity might be in question and, and there's always a fire risk if you have cheap unknown Chinese cells. So. My cells in this battery are, this battery is Samsung's and um, my other two e-bikes are LG batteries. So, um, you know, just make sure you use good quality cells and, you know, you can either build it yourself or you can, uh, you know, buy one, but make sure the cells are of good quality. So, you know, with, once you mount your front wheel, 
Mount your pedal assist sensor. Put the controls on the handlebars. Mount your battery. And then obviously run all the wires to the controller and the battery. You are done. And you will end up with a system that um, I think you will not be disappointed with. I hope that's helpful and please feel free to ask any questions and uh, please subscribe if you like what I'm doing.